So you want to see the menu meta. Okay, let me let me tell you. Okay, let's let's do this. So let's talk about the weather menu on a set of course competizione. Uh, because one guy asked it on the chat, so why not? Right, so in game. Okay, so a guy in the chat asked if I can explain the weather and track conditions menu, this one. And why not? Let's do it. Well, first of all, there is some explanation here, so you might want. But mainly, what you need to know is that, you know, you, we have some presets. Okay, so we have some presets. So simply, you can select clear, cloudy, and, you know, you get different situations. Uh, light rain, you get some rain here, uh, medium rain, so whenever you click something like that, you get an already fixed preset, and when you select this, you go on the track, and the whole track remains in these conditions that you can see the here, disabled, because you cannot change them, but you can see, so the cloud cover remains at 82%, the precipitation of the rain remains at 62%, this is the Averance ambient temperature, I will talk about you in a minute, what it means. Uh, the grip level can be optimum, fast, and so on. Uh, and the wetness, again, is fixed. Okay, so this is what happens when you select a preset. It's pretty easy to understand, no big deal. Now, what happens here is when you go into custom, everything, you can change everything, all right? You can change everything, and this is where the nice thing. So if you don't like some of our presets, you can go to custom and say, okay, for example, I need more clouds, okay? And you can put it on whatever number you want. Now, here's the interesting thing. You might say, yes, I need more rain, but I cannot change the rain. Well, to change the rain, you need more clouds. So if you see, by you know putting the rain at a higher level, at some point, you know, somewhere around 60, you can have rain. So you need at least 60% coverage of clouds on, on the sky to start having rain. And not only that, but as you can see, the more, the more rain you put here, as you raise the level of rain, of, uh, of rain of precipitation, then also the cloud cover goes up. You can see that more rain, more clouds. More rain, more clouds. So all those things are connected. Same thing here. If you go down, rain goes down. So you cannot put, for example, completely, uh, I don't know, 100% rain and no, no clouds. It, it's just not possible. All right? Now, again, we have uh, the average ambient temperature. In a minute, I will explain you what average ambient temperature means. Um, and then you have the grip level. Now, the grip level for the rain is as important as it is for dry track. You know that if you are in a clear dry track, you can put simply green. Green uh, grip level means that the track is completely cleaned. Uh, there is no rubber okay, uh, on the road and you have less grip. Okay. Now, opti uh, fast is a little bit more rubber, so you have some extra grip on the racing line and optimum is like you know you you just had a race happened before you go on the track so all the cars running a around uh, they have laid lots of rubber on the racing line and you have the optimum grip that you can get from the track now uh, a set of course competition it doesn't do three clear steps so uh, if you are in green and you go too fast it's not like clack and you are in fast and you instantly go faster you go slowly from green 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 at some point we call it fast, but again fast is another range of values of more and more grip and at some point we call it optimum. But again optimum it's some range of values and at some point you have the best of the best of the best. Okay. So even if you go for example in a qualifying session and you find yourself that the track just went from fast to optimum, it still pays to wait to the end of the qualifying session to do your best lap because this is where from all the cars you know lapping that you're gonna get the best possible uh, grip from from the track so this is grip level now exact the exact opposite happens when you have rain so if you have rain here like this okay and you have an optimum track this means that the car the sorry the um, the track has rubber lots of rubber and when the rubber gets wet from the rain 
it's get, it gets extremely slippery because there is oil that you know, gets, uh, gets thrown around and it's very, very slippery. So the more rain, rain comes down and the more washes away the rubber. And the more it washes away the rubber, the grip lever goes too fast and green. Now, this is inversed when it's rain. So when the track is green and it rains, you have the best possible grip on the, race, on the racing line. But if it rains and the, and the track is still at optimum, the racing line is extremely slippery. It doesn't last like this for a longer time, maybe five to seven laps, something like that. But between those laps, especially if it drizzles and doesn't actually rain, the racing line is extremely slippery and you should be very careful or possibly go and you know, break uh, on, on the inside, outside of the racing line. You might have seen me doing that in the last race at Nürburgring where on my last stint uh, we had a full optimum uh, rubber track and it started to drizzle and if you look again at that, um, at that race and I will put the, uh, uh, the link here when I will cut this video and uh, put it online again uh, you can go here and you will see me trying to into the braking zones to go outside of the of the racing line go you know straight and then make like a v on the trajectory and get back out again again as i could outside of the racing line to accelerate faster uh, you can also make a tiny bit more on the wide m more wider racing line inside the turn and not go exactly on the apex because on the apex you got lots of rubber now you probably will see me only doing that f on some turns because you cannot do it on all the turns and only for four to five laps something like that there were 50 cars 40 cars on the track and there was lots of rain so at some point they washed out all the rubber and we could get back to the racing line again but still uh, there were problems and obviously you might see and notice that curbs were absolutely lethal so st stay very very careful uh, Yasen asked how all this is affected by the time multiplier it does not get affected by the time multiplier so this is actually physics so everything is always real time even if you put it 2x 3x 4x whatever on the multiplier you might see you know the the sun goes up and down but how much time it is needed to wet a truck to clear a truck to clean the rubber line and so on this is not affected at all this is always uh, real time 1x and you cannot accelerate it okay so this is for the grip levels and then you can change the wetness possibly and you can say the standing water so for example you can try something like this so you can have here uh, low precipitation and lots of standing water and wetness so in this situation if you are in a race for example you will have uh, after just a little just i don't know five six eight laps whatever with lots of cars you're going to have a dry line which is going to be very interesting but uh, all the uh, actual asphalt outside the racing uh, dry line it's going to be still wet and you're still going to have standing water puddles uh, also in the racing line so it, probably you're going to be needed in a situation like that to have slick tires because the wet tires are gonna overheat a lot uh, but you have to be very very careful on what you're doing because if you try to you know attack someone and go outside the racing line and uh, you know break you possibly gonna you're gonna end way way long in aqua planning or if you get a puddle and you are not modulating the accelerator on the puddle you're gonna have big issues of aqua planning so um MSH says, is there a possibility that in an endurance race the track can change from wet to green? Absolutely. Ab absolutely. Uh, actually, this is what happened, uh, MSX, on the last race. On the last race, we went from completely rubber line, it started to rain, it was very slippery, thunderstorm completely washed out all the rubber, the, the track went back to green, then it stopped raining and Practically at the end of the race, uh, a dry line was forming and that dry line was completely green. So everything can happen. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the percentages, uh, Mikael Medina asks, all these percentages are visible anywhere in the driver HUD? No. 
this is a very specific uh, thing that we did to not let you know anything of those percentages. Why? Because a real driver doesn't know what percentage of wetness it has. You really have to understand, you really have to, you know, try to get your risks, you know, and find out what, what you can do. I mean, in the last race, we had a top alien guy, Nils Nauzox. We have that guy, top alien guy, best of the best of the best. Honestly, I'm not even exaggerating. He's one of the best guys ever, right? And he was driving a BMW. He was doing a great race with his uh, co-drivers. And we started having rain. And he tried to overtake a car from the outside. He was that fast. And he went a little bit on the, um, on the curb. And he spun. So he took a risk. He tried to do And he felt that he could do it. But he spun. Stupid mistake, whatever you want to call it, loss of concentration, whatever. But this is all about racing. Real racing is all about taking risks or calculated risks. I don't know how you want to call them. And try to find that extra performance. And it's all about trial and error, trial and error. Do something on one lap. Does it work? You don't know. Do something else on the next lap. Does it work better? No. Go back to what you were doing on the lap before and so on and so on. This is how real drivers do it. Um, yes, I'm going to talk about that in, in, in a minute. Uh, okay, so if you don't know what to do here, obviously you can do a random weather and you can select the variability of the random weather. Obviously, if you put random weather, you put it down to 1%, pretty much nothing will happen. But if you put it on, on 80%, obviously you have lots, lots of uh, percentages and possibilities that the, the weather will change. It's not that the weather uh, uh, will, um, will go from dry to wet. No, it might start wet and then dry down. Or it might start dry and then you know, start to rain. Or it might do dry rain, dry rain again whatever it's it's completely random so there are possibilities but the higher you you put that the more variation on the weather you're gonna have now this is something very interesting here be very careful unfortunately we don't explain this very well um, but here's what you need to know so if you select variability the moment you select it and you go back now the system the software underneath has already made a selection of of weather so you go into the session like this, right? Uh, and we have rain. Now if I go out from here, okay, and go back in like this, now, and I have rain again. And you go out and you go in and you have the same rain again. So. We had people saying, oh, but nothing changes. Where is the variability? Where is the randomness? Now, here is the problem. You need to go out. Okay. I know this is a little bit of... And nobody tells about it, but here I am explaining. And you have to go back and then single player again. This is now changes again. Possibly, to be sure, just go inside here. Go disable, enable again, and change it again. And this time, you're going to have a different weather. Right? Because... This is when it, you know, tries to, to understand. We got the same weather, doesn't matter. But this is how you have to do it, okay? So you cannot go just back and forth, back and forth, and uh, try to have the weather you, you changing. It, it won't happen. You need to reset the whole system to get that new random weather. Okay, so this is something to remember. Um, okay, so this is all what, what happens here. Now, if still this is, I don't know, one day you're like this, you're watching the screen, you cannot really decide, you can still click on the randomize and you get different levels of wetness, standing water, whatever. You see here, everything changes. It's completely random. So if you don't want to do something that you know what you're going to find, just hit randomize, go back and go to, uh, go to the race. Okay. Right. So let's go back to clear. And here, random, like this, disable like that, random weather, disable, okay. So I want to show you uh, something specific. So right now, we have nothing. This is all zero, 
So this is practically a uh, clear weather, okay? And I have put the average ambient temperature 27. Now, why is this average? Here's the situation. The temperature in, in a racing track never stays the same, okay? And this is what we're doing in a Soto Corsa Competizione, because we try to simulate all the situations because we simulate a 24 hours uh, race. So, 27 degrees Celsius of average ambient temperature. Now, we go into practice session, uh, day, night time, 9 o'clock in the morning, that's important. So we go inside. Let's load the truck. All right. And what we have here now is 27 Celsius and 28 truck. This is at 9 o'clock in the morning. Quit. Get, let's go back again. Now this time, I won't be changing the weather. Practice. 1 o'clock, let's go do 2 o'clock midday. Okay, 2 o'clock in, in the afternoon, midday. Confirm, go back in again. Thank you so much for your kind words in the chat, guys. So this is midday now, and now we have 31 degrees ambient and 42 on the track, because there are no clouds on the track with all the sun that is directly on top of us. We have very, very hot track. So the 27 degrees average is during the whole 24 hours. That's why we say average ambient temperature, 24 hours. So in midday, you're going to have lots of hot uh, with 31 degrees. Quit again. <laughs> yeah. And you go back to, I don't know, something like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. 2 o'clock in the morning, deep night. Okay, so let's go back again. And now the 27 degrees have become 19 degrees. 19 degrees and 19 degrees track also because there's no sun. So you have the same temperature everywhere. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, other interesting things that can happen, for example, let's go back. So I hope now you understand what means average uh, temperature. So let's go back to 2 o'clock in midday. Uh, 27 degrees, okay. So if you remember before, we had 31 degrees uh, ambient because of the sun and 42 degrees on the track, which is again very, very hot. Now. I will raise this the cover, the cloud cover to something like 85%, so lots of clouds, okay? Back again, start the session. And here we are now, so no rain at all, but the temperature, the ambient temperature is not so hot. It's not 31 degrees as before because there's no sun. So it's 28, just a little bit higher than the average we had before, okay? And also very important, the track temperature is also very low. It's 34, it's not that big difference as we had before. And if you raise the cloud, it's gonna be lower and lower, lower up to go almost identical to the ambient uh, temperature. So all that stuff changes dynamically inside the Seto Corso Competizione and greatly, greatly affects the physics and handling of the car. So to give you some example, um, the tires uh, not only get cooled by the, uh, you know, the uh, air, which has a 28 degrees temperature, but they also cool when they touch uh, the ground. And the ground now is 34. So you can understand that the ground at 34 will cool your tires more than when you have sun uh, hitting the ground and you have something like 42 or 45 degrees Celsius on the asphalt. Uh, even more importantly, the brake ducts, the brakes, the brakes get air from very, very low, very low on the surface of, uh, of the track. So if you have, for example, the same ambient temperature, 10 to 8 degrees, but there is sun and so the track is at 40 degrees, you're gonna have your brakes hotter than the same ambient temperature but in a cloudy weather when the track is at 34 degrees. Why? Because the brake ducts, as I said, pick up um, air which is very, very low 
uh, on and very near on the asphalt so they get something like an average temperature between the track temperature and the ambient temperature so it's very very important uh, this thing um, all right so uh, what else I think this is pretty much everything you need to know about weather so this is another uh, nice thing to cut for for another video hope you liked it let me know if there are any uh, any any questions about that what's the max degrees on track I think we are something around 55 60 something like that really really hot adding fog uh, we did consider it but in the end we said okay no because to be honest anyway we, we considered it but didn't happen uh, right <laughs> Okay, so let's go back. So as you can see, um, it, it really is a, a quite, quite complex system. Uh, there are some uh, choices we've made in order specifically to not show you what is happening. Because we think that you guys, I mean, you really need to start feeling the, the cars. Uh, as I said many times, uh, sim racers for more than two decades almost they have learned uh, not to properly drive always but to drive on the numbers so we were looking at the HUD and we were like oh now the rain is 25 25% raining 25% wetness okay this is the time let's go to the beach and change the tires no no it doesn't work like that you need to feel it. Uh, you need to see what the opponents do. You might get your risk and it might pay for you or you might, you know, lose a lot of time. Uh, everything is a gambling, you know. Uh, you, you need to do this as they do in, in, in real life. So that brings you closer to what we love in the end, what they do in, in real life. Uh, Fanalab. No, I don't use Fanalab. Door. What is door? What is, what is door? Another thing that you might want to, to know, as you know, we also simulate wind, okay? We simulate wind, but as you can see, you cannot find wind anywhere in here, okay? You cannot find wind any here, anywhere in here. Uh, why is that? Because uh, wind uh, goes up and down, so normally when the weather is normal, wind is going to be pretty much stable. Uh, you wanna s you, we do show you on the HUD uh, how much wind there is, so... When you go inside the game, <coughs> um, you will see here, you can see the wind here, it's zero per, uh, kilometers right now. And when you drive with the, go, go, go. the multifunction display, you can change and you can find again the temperature over here at the top of the pit stop uh, HUD. And on top of the right corner of the HUD, you can also find the wind and you have the car from the above and a small arrow that shows where the wind is coming from towards your car in real, in real time. So normally the wind stays you know, stable, but if the weather changes, the wind goes up. We had also a bug on this. We fixed that, we fixed that with the latest hotfix that we released, 1.5.8. So now works properly so when the weather changes either it's dry and it's gonna be you know it's gonna it's gonna rain uh, the wind will go up uh, if it's raining for a long time and at some point probably it's gonna change the weather is gonna change the, the, the clouds will go away then again the wind will go up and give you an indication that something is gonna happen so again wind you cannot choose it but it is inside the dynamic system and works properly so if you have clouds in order for the rain to stop the clouds have to move so wind comes in the clouds move and you don't you don't have rain anymore so this is it uh, 